every year on the last date of the year, the church invites us to reflect through the prologue in the Gospel of John, which is in chapter 1, verses 1 to 18. Many consider the prologue of John as a summary of the whole Gospel of John. For our reflection today, I will take three points which I think we can focus on. And the first point is about Jesus himself. The prologue begins by telling us that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. In other words, the Greek concept of Logos, Word, and Theos, God. Because the Greeks were an abstract people, and because John is writing for a Greek audience largely, he uses these abstract terms like Logos and Theos, which we really cannot understand. At the end of the prologue, however, the Logos is transformed into the Son, and the Theos is transformed into the Father. So Logos becomes Huios, and Theos becomes Pater. Son and Father, or daughter and father, the relationship of parent and child is something every one of us can understand. But the question is, what is it that has led to the transformation of the Logos or the Word to the Huios or the Son? And how is it that the God has become Father because of what happens in chapter 1, verse 14, when we are told, the Logos became Sax, the Word became flesh. In other words, John does not tell us that the Logos took on a soma or a body. He does not say that the Word took on a body. He tells us the Word became flesh. The Greek word sarx is a word which speaks of transience, is a word which speaks of limitation, is a word which speaks of corruption and sinfulness. That is what the Lord took on when John tells us in the center of the prologue, the Logos became Sarx or the Word became flesh. It was because the Word became flesh that he could become Son and that God could be revealed as Father. If Moses gave the law, if Moses gave the commands, Jesus has given much more than the law, much more than the commands, because Jesus has given grace and truth as summarized in love. So the first point the prologue makes is about our Lord, who not merely took on a body, but who became flesh, to reveal the Father's love to us. The second point is about John. Twice in the prologue is John mentioned when John the evangelist tells us a man was sent by God. His name was John. What did John come to do? What did John come to be? He came to be a witness. The English word witness is in Greek marturia, which means martyr. So in other words, John was a martyr for his Lord. He witnessed to the Lord not only by the words that he spoke, but also by the actions that he performed. His witness was a tangible witness. His witness was a witness which could be seen in the kind of person that he was. However, he also knew that he was not the Messiah. He was merely a witness who would point the way, who would show the way, who would lead the way to the Messiah. 
Once we are told he appeared as this witness and once his role was fulfilled, John knew that he had to disappear from the scene and he disappears with dignity because he had no ego. And the third point is about each one of us. We are privileged to be shown by John the way. We are privileged to have encountered that way when we encountered Jesus. And so the prologue is asking us about our own responsibility. Our responsibility today is, if we accept the role of John, is to lead others like John did. Not only by the words that we speak, but by the actions that we perform, we lead them to Jesus. If we want to imitate Jesus, we imitate him by the love and the unconditional love. So that people will see in us the incarnation of great, unconditional and unfathomable love. On the last day of the year. Let us ask God for this grace as we stand at the threshold of the old year and at the threshold of this new year to ask God that as we leap into January 1st, 2020, we will be those images of Jesus, those images of God that people can see.